everybody, and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's Canine Educator. Thank you guys so very much for joining me today. One of the worst cases of dominance I've ever seen. Now, dominance in the dog world is something that probably gets thrown around way too much, way, way too much. A lot of people don't have any idea what it is. A lot of people think that if your dog doesn't sit, they're dominant, or if they don't come, they're dominant. Not necessarily. A truly dominant dog is a dog that will actually have a problem with you telling them what to do, even if they know what you want them to do. So getting them off the couch, putting them into a crate, and them coming after you, redirecting, and completely fighting with you during that time. Now this dog, I wanna be extremely clear with you guys because I don't want this video to come off the wrong way. This dog is completely fine all the time unless you tell it what it can and can't do. So in this session, you'll see me break down the entire process of what I would do in a situation like this and really some of the ideas that you guys can take from this is how I approach it and how, how we started to adapt as the dog started changing in behavior. So, so we brought it, we had to bring a catch pole out, which we haven't had to do in a long time. The catch pole is to ensure safety. Basically what I did with this thing is it's a long pole that you put a slip on to make sure the dog can't bite you. Yes, the dog had a muzzle on, but in order to really, really solve this case, or at least really crack down on it, I had to basically use the catch pole to keep me safe. Because as the dog actively came after me, if I use the leash, he's gonna hit me. And if he hits me, my body's gonna react, which is making him win. So in this video, you're gonna see probably 15 minute battle of the dog ferociously growling at me, lunging at me, coming after me. And what I'm doing with this catch pole is I'm just holding him there and I'm just sitting there so he can't get to me. So it eliminates the reactivity that he normally gets and what he's basically taught every human around him is if you try to get him to do something he doesn't wanna do, he's gonna lunge and growl at you. So I battled him until he gave up. It isn't an alpha thing, it isn't a dominant thing. I just had to explain to him, you know what, dude, from now on, when you do this crazy behavior and aggressive behavior, you're not gonna win. And so that's what this video it is. I hope you guys like it. I hope it's informative. I hope you guys learn something from this. Uh, I certainly did moving forward. And, and I believe that this is a true test um, for this dog. And as you see at the end, he's totally environmentally, environmentally, um, changing, which means he's cool, 100%. He could be growling and lunging at me and freaking out. Two seconds later, I can give him a piece of treat. That doesn't mean he's neurotic or unpredictable. The behavior is actually extremely predictable. As soon as you touch his head, as soon as you touch his face, his muzzle, any equipment he has on, he has a problem with that. And if you don't back off, he's just gonna keep coming at you. So it's definitely not ideal, but it is a situation where you can predict almost every time the triggers that's going to happen. No, no, leave it. Leave it. I know it. Leave it. Hey, Fooey! Don't, don't pull him. Don't pull him because he's gonna come right back at you. Ah, easy, easy. Good. Relax. Hey. Well, it usually goes on easy. I'm sorry. A truly dominant dog is very rare. Very rarely do you find a dog that is going to be super aggressive when you try to get them to do something they don't want to do. And the majority of like dominance is that, where they're fine, they're good, they're obedient, um, but as soon as you try to get them to do something that you they don't want to do, they become nasty. A lot of times you see that on more dominant dogs, Rotties, things like that, getting them out of the crate, getting them off the bed, that's where you get the battle. And they're like, no, nah, you're gonna have to fight me for this. It's kind of what you're seeing here. Um, he definitely has a problem with you doing that. Um, so I want to try to find some triggers and try to find some ways that we can um, work through them and see how bad it is. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put another leash on him. Just a slip collar. And I want to see how he does with me doing this. And you're just going to hold him. Um, because the muzzle's on, at any time that he, if I feel like he is getting crazy, um, I'm gonna try to fight it out with him. No, because the problem with that is, is then you're rewarding him for that. So I don't love going to battle with dogs, um, but sometimes it break, you break through with them. Um, I know he's going to try to battle me, and I wanna see if I can battle him to, 
it sounds so barbaric as far as like dog training methods because then the whole alpha thing, I'm not trying to be alpha, that's silly. I, I don't think that that's really what I need to do here. I just need to find some sort of clarity in the situational stuff that he gets into. Um, Cause I'm not trying to like pin him to the ground and be like, I'm bigger and better. That's like silly. I just want him to know that I'm only trying to help him. Yes, because here's, okay. So here's the thing is there is a possibility that he has learned that if he does rawr, he wins. Yes, so if I battle him through that a couple times and say like, that's not gonna happen anymore and it gets better, then we have something. And in every dog that I work with behavioral cases, which it's the only work I do, I find out a game plan as we talk through it, an investigation, and it's gonna go a couple different ways. I don't know exactly which way it's gonna go, but that's what I'm seeing is he freaks out and nobody's ever battled him. We just, he wins every single time he wins. So I'm not trying to pin him and battle him and choke him and hurt him. I'm just trying to stand my ground and not back off. And it is going to be chaotic and crazy, but uh, as long as he doesn't get that muzzle off, we're good. I'm just gonna try to slip this over. Good boy. Shh. So give me the leash because I hooked his... Can you, can you slip that over? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna just try to take this off. Hold on. Hey, Morgan, you wanna go grab me the catch pole? It's in the back. Just hang, just release the pressure a little bit. Good. Nice and relax. Good, good. I'm gonna get a catch pole. It's built for this. And then he's gonna argue me, and I'm just gonna do this. Yeah, dude, keep freaking out, and he can't get to me. I'm just trying to let him know that he can't win these fights every time. Good. So now you can let go. There's a good boy. Good. So I'm just safely, very, very calmly, not, he, he, see how pissed he's getting? And, and, and never do this. Only do this if you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, do not do this at home. It's okay, buddy. But I'm just teaching him like, go ahead, keep growling and whatever. I'm not going anywhere, dude. That's what he's done. Every time he snarl, he wins. He should win. Like nobody wants to get bit. So what I'm trying to do is find a creative, humane, way safe way to say all right fight me and then he just boom 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 and i just stand there i'm like you're gonna give up good boy good boy he's smart that's the problem <laughs> See? see, see how he like walked away? Yeah. He's never lost, ever, ever. And now he's stressed. Of course he's stressed. His whole life he's been like, not his whole life, I shouldn't say that. Recently in his maturity, um, this is him. And this is not This is a dog that could potentially bite somebody from this behavior and we don't wanna see that, that's for sure. Good boy. Yeah, that makes me win. And, and the other thing I wanna mention is I'm not naive enough to say like, this is building him up, you're making it worse. No sh <laughs> Like that's the point. Like he's really, he's gotten away with this so many times and if somebody doesn't do something, somebody's gonna get hurt. So that's why we're going the extra mile to really see what's up. Hey. Okay. Good boy, good boy. Just gonna wait for him to look away. Go 
boy. So if I move, that's, that's where he focuses. Good boy. See? The first time he's lost. Good boy. And what I'm trying to do is try to see if he can lose. Like I'm trying to see if he's safe or not. Like can he actually turn off or is it just neurotic behavior all the time when you tell him he can't do something? Once he loses, he calms down, which before we didn't have that off switch. Good boy. I gave him a little confrontation, no, no issue there. Good boy. Good job, big man. So what I'm so what I, so the camera knows what I'm doing. What I'm doing is when he does his growl to try to back me away from what I'm asking him to do, I give him body pressure. I step right in and I say, no, 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 I'm not moving away like you normally have the opportunity to get somebody to do. And it's helping for sure. I just don't know how long it's gonna take. What's up, man? Good. It's a good session for you to watch. <laughs> Good boy. So I just want to be clear about what I'm doing with the catch pole is it's, it's just hooked on him. It's not choking him or anything. Um, and when he growls, I lean in like this and I'm not using the pole to push and pull him around um, or poke him or anything like that. I'm just using it to step in and I'm using this as my safety. If he does react at my face, I step back. Good boy, big man. Much better. Good boy. So I'm going to go in again and mess with his equipment and see what, see what happens. Good boy. So build, but not where it was, right? battle. That's all it is. It's a mental game. Because the reality is, is I want to look to the other side of people watching this in the future of you have to really know what you're doing to do this type of work. And what I'm doing is the reality is, is if I did this and I had him come over to me, he's going to be fine with me. So it's not like I'm building him to attack me or I'm building him to have a problem with me. That's not the case at all. He just, he's fine with me. He doesn't care. The problem is, is when he's I messing with me and he's doing this and he's like back off dude I'm like no and then you get submission right huge difference and 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 I think I want to just clarify for that because if you watch this video in the future like he just wants me to move and I'm like no I'm not moving it's nothing to be messed with for sure it's not to be taken lightly but I just want to clarify that I'm not getting him to do things he doesn't want to do and pushing him with this. This is a safety thing that if he comes after me, I can just push him away and more or less win the situation. But right there was extreme mental battle where he was just like, cause he's waiting like, dude, why aren't you, what are you doing? You're not looking away yet? I'm like, nah, it's not going to work this time. Good. So I want to just, um, I want to go through the evaluation in a temperament way that if it doesn't matter. I'm going to like slow it down for him a little bit. So yes, he's pissed off. Yes, he's stressed. Yes, he's mad. Yes, it's negative for him. But I think it's the step in the right direction because I'll show you a temperament test that if I take this off, good. And I, and I don't give him, yeah, he's like, screw this thing. Come here, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Come here, Scott. Come here. Good boy. Good job. Come here, Scott. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Good. So, um, Adam, you got this, right? Okay, cool. cool. Okay. So, this is a temperament test just to show people out there that are going to be viewing this and to show you, of course, that 
I'm not creating a conflict between him and I long term. It's just at that time. See, he has a big issue with when he says, mm mm, that's it. Like you're not, because then I could turn around, Scott, sit, go boy, feed him food. And he's like, yeah, sure, I'm cool with you as long as you don't tell me what to do. That's a truly dominant dog. You just have to play management. You have to be really careful with them. You're not gonna see any issues as long as you manage the situation properly and you teach people and you educate yourself on this is what you got. Because other than that, like, come here, buddy. Come here. There's my big man. There's my good boy. Look. Right? Now, if here's here's what you don't wanna see. You don't wanna see me doing this and we're fine, and then him turn. He's always, always, always has a trigger. Always. And that's what temperament tests are about, to really figure out, hey, um, is he gonna just randomly do something? I don't think so. I think if you push him, and you push him, and you push him, and you find his trigger, if I were to touch his muzzle right now, he would hate me. Because he doesn't want to be told what to do. And again, that's a truly dominant dog that is very rare, very rare. Usually you get like neurotic cases where the dog just, we're sitting here like this and he snaps. That's a dangerous dog, that's a problem. I'm not seeing that here. Like I know that if I do something he doesn't wanna do, he's gonna fight me. His fighting is like fighting an MMA, MMA fighter versus like our normal dog would be like a preschooler. You know what I mean? So like when he wants to fight, it's on. Like and you're gonna get a hurricane. That's the only unfortunate part. Good boy. Okay, let's go. Good boy, come here. Come here, good boy. There's a good boy. Cool, what time is it? All right, we're out of time. Um, what is it? Okay, okay. Um, so we're out of time. So I wanna continue to work with him, um, but we're now, but now we're, we're more, we are more zoned in on what we're dealing with. And I knew like calling the shots of like, it's gonna go one way or the other, and as soon as he disengaged, he went <sighs> Like he went from crazy, crazy Cujo to <sighs> fine. It's just how he wears it. It, it just, it's a, it's a scary thing because of how he wears it. It doesn't mean he won't bite. Any dog can bite. That little puppy in the cage could bite. This fake dog might be able to bite. Um, it's just about when is he going to do that aggressive behavior? Hey, leave it. So you just, you have to be really careful with him. He's a loaded gun. Um, all dogs are loaded guns, so it's not like a necessarily negative thing towards him. It's just, he's gonna be fine, again, unless you put him in a situation where he's gonna argue with you, don't. And that's what we're gonna work on, is try to figure out how we can decrease the argumentative side of him and really work on some of his behavior. So I hope this video is um, enjoyed by you guys and taken well by you guys. All I'm trying to do here at the Academy is help this dog move forward. And I think this was a huge win for this dog today. Thank you guys so very much for liking this video, of course, subscribing to my channel. I appreciate you guys so very much. Peace.